Hello, folks. It's Liz Soria here, your host of the Tax Advisor and Business Podcast. And as usually, you know that I have always amazing guests coming and joining my show. And today is going to be a very interesting topic, something that I really have wanted to even learn myself a little more. Um, and one of the things is called about commercial real estate leasing. Um, how can we learn a few tips and tricks? So I'm bringing aboard um, actually George Morales, or Jorge, as we call him in Spanish. And he is a very successful um, you know, into the real estate, and now uh, he also has a book that's called "Don't Sign," right? Don't sign the leasing, right? Don't sign the lease. <laughs> the, Not until you've read the book, at least. Yes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> and you are with the Blue Box Real Estate, and here in the state of Florida. So, George, welcome, welcome to our show, and please feel free to um, kind of bring up a little bit more your background and what makes you an expert, uh, pretty much in this field. Thank you, Liz, and it's a pleasure to be here with you, and. Uh, Look forward to getting to know you even more, you know, off offline here and, uh, and having you on our podcast as well. So I've been in commercial real estate for over 23 years. It's, it's all I've done. I kind of joke with people that if commercial real estate doesn't work out for me, I'll have to go back to Chick-fil-A because that's the only <laughs> other job I've had. So <laughs> that's um, funny. It's, it's what I'm best at. And most of that experience has been in the sector of commercial leasing. And most of that has been representing property landlords, office property landlords with their leasing efforts and marketing campaigns and representing office tenants, helping them negotiate their leases and finding space. So that's just a quick, in a nutshell, uh, my background. Nice, nice. Uh, now, is there any issues if you have to represent both parties? Well, it's a good question. There can be, the, you know, the number one rule is disclosure. So yeah. you try to avoid it where you can, but I'll tell you a funny story. I was representing a, a high profile tenant and uh, I'm at my offices here at 999 Ponce in Coral Gables and we toured the market. Well, we didn't tour space in this building. There wasn't the right fit. The space wouldn't work for him. So we never toured it. And then he calls me uh, on a Christmas uh, holiday party that he got invited to the building and said, what do you know about 999 Ponds? I said, what do you mean? It's, it's my property. I represent the owner there. And he goes, I like this building. And oh, so great. we ended up finding a space that worked for him. So that was a case where I represented both sides. But again, full disclosure uh, is the key. If you're one of the clients say, that's great, not willing to do it, then you have to uh, recuse yourself from, from one of the sides. Now, I, you know, it also helps, sorry, Liz, if you have a firm, you know, we've, we've, we're growing, we've got three folks with us, so you can bifurcate sometimes responsibilities and put up Chinese walls if they're willing to do that or feel more comfortable. But the bottom line is full disclosure. Full disclosure, and I agree with you, especially when it comes to legal stuff you want to be so careful with, right? Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, personal conflicts, you know, between the two parties. But as long as you have it in writing, it's under disclosure, everything is right. fine. So you can work with both men, in other words. You, yes, you can. And, okay. and again, it's very rare that that could happen, but it can. I mean, Miami, at the end of the day, is a small community. South Florida, we, we operate throughout South Florida from Homestead to, to uh, Palm Beach. Um, right. So it's rare for it to happen, but it can happen. It can happen. Okay, so if you don't mind kind of digging a little bit in um, to, you know, um, understand a little bit more, like you said, the sector, because I'm not really that familiar with, and that's part, as you know, part of my um, audience really are real estate investors, and the majority are really into residential, right? So you hear a lot of multi, you know, families and single families and yada, yada, uh, but commercial is a kind of different Yes. Completely different. Uh, and um, it, it takes, I think, certain skills and, 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 and definitely experience. I would say that, you know, skills and experience is a perfect combination. And yes. if one is lacking, uh, you know, there's a chance that you're going to make some sort of mistake. So um, with that said, what, what are the things that we need to uh, be careful or just kind of watch out when it comes to uh, signing a lease, uh, especially for uh, business owners like myself, if they're interested in, uh, you know, renting out, uh, a, you know, building space, what kind of recommendations can, can, can you give us, please, George? All right. Well, the first thing you need to consider is to get a professional commercial real estate broker on your side. As your advocate, as, as representing your best needs, nine out of 10 times or more, when you go to look at office space, the landlord will have a broker or someone that he's paid in-house to represent his best interests. And they have a fiduciary responsibility to do what's best for the landlord. That means the best rental rate, the best terms, the best provisions of that lease. So okay. tenants need to understand that they need to have someone likewise 
working on, on their side. Uh, case in point, um, if a group of professionals wants to investigate health insurance, right. they'll go out and, and, and talk to a health professional, an insurance professional. If they want financial advice, they'll call their stockbroker, financial planner. Uh, if they need legal advice, they'll hire an attorney. If they need office space, they'll go do it themselves. And I've always found that to be part and parcel because our industry is very guarded. Commercial real estate is very guarded industry. We, we guard our know-how, we guard our knowledge and information, unless you're our client. Um, and so what that has produced in the local markets is a little bit of an ignorance to the terms of commercial real estate, the processes and things that tenants need to know. Uh, especially in, in you know, the local markets, this business owners, entrepreneurs who operate within South Florida. Now they could be great companies. Um, I represent some local companies that have nine offices throughout South Florida. So wow. doesn't, I'm not talking about the size so much as the fact that they don't have the advantages of perhaps a global office user. For instance, I was 10 years at a national firm and we represented uh, Whirlpool Corporation, Sprint, Bank of America, uh, and so forth, Delta Dental, on the landlord side, we represented Tishman Spire, KBS, you know, very large global owners of all real estate and also occupiers of real estate. Well, you know what they all had? They all had a corporate director of real estate, whether right. thought it was VP of real estate or, or managing director or asset manager. They all had someone who had an MBA in real estate, specifically commercial real estate, handling their real estate. But you know what they also had yeah. in South Florida? a commercial real estate broker representing their needs Interesting. because Interesting. of exactly your question, this, this knowledge, this know-how, the market intel that they possess that they don't sitting out of Michigan or New York. So, you know, one of our main missions, uh, as, and I'm a, I'm a Christian, so our, our goal at Blue Box Real Estate is to honor God Absolutely. and to serve our fellow man. And how do we yes. do that? By empowering business owners to make the best informed decision regarding their commercial real estate. So that's a long way to get to my first point, case in point. There are a few provisions, Liz, that landlords will gladly give if it's asked for. Is that, that right? Can, what are that the can, one and only okay, one? And, and these are provisions that can make your life easy coming into an office space when you sign the lease and going out of the office space when you're potentially leaving or renewing. One of them is a little phrase called early access. So early, early access, picture this. You've signed, your lease expires let's just say May 31st. Okay. You sign a new lease because you needed to grow, you need to expand June 1st at another property. Well, what ends up happening? If you don't have early access, then your lease expires, you're moving out that weekend, you're getting in to the building, the new building, and it takes you another 10 to 14 days to acclimate, and it's a lot of downtime, but guess what? You're all the while, you're paying full rent <laughs> on that space. For the two spaces. So, for, for the two spaces in some cases. So an early access provision simply states that before the lease commences, the landlord will allow you to come in two weeks prior so you can set up your FF&E, which is furniture, fixtures, and equipment. You're not doing business, right. but you're setting up the office so that when that first day comes, you're firing on all cylinders and you're profitable and the employees feel good and there's no downtime. Most that's what, I'm sorry to do it. That's what I call prepping. You have to prep before you move in. I mean, it's like anything else. It's not like you just come in with luggage and I'm here and now you have to kind of, you know, put your furniture. So I think that's a very good point. Now, does, is that something, I'm sorry to do it, but is that something that is common for leases to have that or something it, that you need to put a request? Bingo. Or it, is, it is commonly provided to tenants who know to ask for it. If, if a tenant does not have a representation, a commercial you know, broker representing them, Thank you. that's one small factor that, you know, at the end of the day, is it a big business point? No, but it sure does make life easier when you're going into a new office. Absolutely. To get it I set agree. up. And yeah. again, that's, it's a provision that's commonplace in South Florida that landlords, reputable landlords are glad to give if asked for. Another one is on the, on the tail end of a lease. Okay. Now you're, you've moved in. It's been a tremendous success. Your employees love this space. Uh, your clients have uh, loved the location. Your customers know where you are. Mm -hmm. And now your lease expires and you go to your landlord and say, hey, okay, I'd like to renew your lease. And he says, I'm sorry, but I've showed your space to your neighbor who needs to grow and we're gonna lease it to them. And you say, what? And now you're in a flux. There might be a few months to go or six months. And now you have to find a new location after you put all that sweat and goodwill into that location. So a simple provision 
called an option to renew. Option to renew. And, an option everybody. to renew <laughs> would guard you. Would, what it does is it takes the control of the space in the future away from the landlord and puts it into the hands of the business owner. Now, you can negotiate what the future rent will be. Are there going to be any incentives, improvements? You know, all that. The there's time provisions. All that goes into play, but at the, at, the, at the very basic level, it gives the business owner control of their space for another five years, three years, whatever's set out. But again, it's typical for a landlord to put that on the table only if you ask for it. Only if and, you ask for it. Very you know. interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, I, I had no clue. No, not at all. Well, we could go on forever, Liz. These are very basics, and there's, there's a lot that we could talk about during the life of the lease. Gotcha. But, um, but those, those, two, a lot of that. those yes. two were really good. Yeah, those are like what called dirty secrets. You know, if you know them, you can negotiate. <laughs> yes. That's really important. Now, let me bring up something because it kind of relates to the last thing that you just mentioned. Let's put a scenario. What happens if I'm already leasing an office space and then suddenly, um, again, I'm interested in because my company has grown and I have more personnel and I decide that it's not part of that building cannot accommodate the space that I need. Um, now I know that most of these leads they do have uh, you know the, again certain clauses you know legally yes. that if you cancel or terminate um, and if you don't stay within the same building how rough can those penalties and cancellations can be is there anything that legally you can do or once you sign your sign and well, you're on the hook it depends how you signed it but yeah look we we always all, all our clients we recommend you you don't sign the lease unless you can morally you know fulfill the obligations of whatever that term is but things happen yeah so do. we always advise and it's it's chapter 12 actually in the, in in the don't sign the lease book i i Good. debated about making it chapter 11 but i thought that kind of may, may not may not work well but it's never signed I'm a sorry, are you saying there's missing chapters then? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's chapters. for your second book. That's for the second book. Okay. Well, first of all, never sign a personal guarantee. If it can at all be avoided, sometimes it can't, and you can mitigate that. Then sometimes you can negotiate it down to a lower amount than the entire lease term. Uh, how do you avoid signing a personal guarantee? Well, maybe instead of a five-year lease, you do a shorter term. Maybe okay. instead of new carpet, you take older carpet. Uh, you can find ways to mitigate it, but it, it's so devastating. I've seen it when it's, it's bad enough if the business cycle uh, is such that the business can't survive any longer, but when then it bring it into the personal cycle, it's devastating. So, but yeah, there, there are certain key things that you can do and we do this all the time. Most leases, again, some have it, some don't, some have it that are more user-friendly and that is a sublease or assignment clause. Um, most of the basic sublease assignment clause and what it does what it states is generally is you have the right with landlord approval to sublease it to another tenant now here's a problem yes the standard language Liz in most of these leases are going to be so one-sided that you're at the mercy of the landlord they can sit back and take 30 days a year they can say no for whatever reason a lot of leases will ask for uh, landlord's sole discretion approving or not approving this. So that's where, again, you need someone who understands what the market is, who can come in and negotiate this so it works for your favor. But in essence, if you have a favorable sublease assignment clause, then that's one of your backup options is you can always find another tenant, hire a broker to advertise it, find another tenant to lease it, to backfill it for you, freeing you up. Now, that, I say backup option. That's a good the idea. Best, yes. The best option, Liz, would be uh -huh if you had a, a termination option. And so landlords are very opposed to these. They, you know, it's like the plague, nobody wants to give them. But if you're signing a long-term, anything north of five years, you ought to have it. And okay. it's commonplace in South Florida to get it north of five years, very unlikely south of five years. Um, we're in a landlord's market right now. Rates have never been higher in South Florida. Brickles north of $52 a foot. Some buildings are now hitting 60. So oh my it's, a, oh it's my a definitely the shift has been to a landlord's market. So they're less inclined to give termination options. But that basically would allow you to terminate with some notice, usually a year's notice, some penalty. It's designed to be painful if you have to exercise it and to give the landlord enough time to release your space. But it's a good nuclear option if you have to get out of your space. But you know, in the case of a tenant, if you're going into a building and you think you're growing, 
And here again, I'm kind of giving away the farm, which is what I do in the book. And I've, I've had some people in the industry, Liz, say, why did you give away the farm? I am all ears right now in the rest there of my you go. audience, too. <laughs> don't hold I, back. Please, don't I've, hold back. I've been <laughs> accused of, why will they need to hire us now? You're giving everybody the... the, the no, because you know, I, I see this. You know, this is what I tell people. You know, the majority of, uh, you know, of being honored to interview people like yourself, I feel like uh, you bring so much value to the show, but to help everyone else around. Yes. And the most important things I tell people, we just don't learn in a few minutes. Sorry. No, we right. might pick up a few golden nuggets here and there just to have a, a, a brief understanding of how maybe that topic it's about. But yes. the, the profound and the depth of the topic itself, you have to hire someone to do it for yeah. you. It's yeah, like yeah, me sure. trying to explain how to do your tax return and then you try doing it and see how it works for you. Oh, <laughs> if it's oh, complex. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go into court and represent myself. You know? <laughs> I, no, thank you. So, um, and, and this, and that's a good analogy to commercial real estate because most tenants, if you walk into an office building, look, it could be an industrial warehouse. It could be retail space. My expertise is an office. If you walk into an office building and you rely on the person who's showing you the space, who works for the landlord to negotiate the deal for you, it would be like going into court and, and you're the defendant and you're having the, you know, the, uh, the attorney on the other side trying to prosecute you, represent you. It, it makes no sense, but people do I it agree. all the time. I but another, another quick tidbit, if you're going into a space and you think you're going to grow, your yes. concern is, I'm signing a five-year lease, but I can see in two years I need more space. If you're, now again, it's, it's a, it correlates directly to the, your size. So if you are a larger tenant within the project, if you're a mm -hmm. thousand square feet, that could be a small tenant in a 100,000 foot building. But if you're 1,000 square feet in a 2,000 square foot building, you have a lot of leverage. So it's really not a size issue. It's a, it relates to the relation of the, uh, the proportionate share you're taking of a building. But you can ask for rights like what's called a ROFO, right of first offer. Okay. And what that gives you is the first right to space that's adjacent to you on either side. So if it goes vacant before the landlord can lease it to others, He's got to give it to you first or, le or offer it to you first. And then you can decide whether you need it or not. So that's a great provision. Again, it's something that landlords typically do, but they will not offer it or put it on the table unless you ask for it. And uh, usually you don't even know to ask for it if you don't have someone working on your side. Wow, that's really interesting. And one other thing I want to touch before I let you go, uh, since I know we kind of brainstorming here and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're picking on your brain right now. <laughs> uh, and, and again, uh, I know you have that book. It, it's been, uh, I think, available for the last year or so. And it, it is available on Amazon. Yeah, you can go to you can go to Amazon. You can go to my website, don'tsignthelease.com, and um, there you'll find not just the book is available. And, and the book is again part one is answering ten common questions of commercial real estate, and it's a story. It's a business story. I kind of take you alongside of me. And uh, we represent someone and we do kind of like on the job training. So you'll learn 10 common questions of commercial real estate, how to answer those and commercial real estate lingo, ROFO, TI, TIA, all these things that we throw around in our industry. I teach it in, in a narrative form. Part two is how to avoid pitfalls when signing a lease. There's seven of them. Not, we talked about one or two of them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the glossary alone, I think could be helpful. I put a glossary together and it's basically, this is how I answer my clients when I get asked the same questions and, and that in and of itself is helpful. And uh, so hopefully that's a valuable aid out there. We started a podcast since we had the landing page, Don't Sign the Lease, where we look forward to having you know, your expertise, but we've Thank interviewed you. property managers. Uh, we've interviewed attorneys to talk about lease provisions. Yes, uh, we've have. interviewed civic leaders. So we're trying to, as you know, when you're in business, if you are, let's just say you're a florist and that's your expertise. I've seen more businesses fail, not because they're not an expert in their field, but because of all these other outside fields that impact you. So for instance, I, I am a business owner myself now. Blue Box Real Estate, we launched it two years ago after you know, 10 years at a national firm. Right. Well, all of a sudden, I had to learn about printers and which printer am I gonna buy in office space and how much is my rent gonna be for the first time and marketing and where do I spend Facebook ad dollars or where do I get, you know. So all of a sudden I'm in that field. Well, I'm not an expert in all these fields. So. I had to go to others to, to, to help me out. And that's what we're trying to do in the podcast, very similar to what you're doing also. Yeah. Uh, we also have a commercial real estate blog there uh, that you can entitle Commercial Real Estate Knowledge that we're looking to update and provide actionable 
kind of like our talk, actionable commercial real estate knowledge that, that people can take and say, well, I learned something and now I'm, I'm better for it when I negotiate my lease. And going back to your podcast, the name of the podcast, in case anyone's interested in uh, listening very to the episode. Simple. It's, it's Don't Sign the Lease Podcast. So not to, you know, the theme is what I wish my business knew before I took on real estate. Right. That's excellent. And folks out there, if you're listening or watching to our webcast through YouTube, by all means, um, you know, follow, follow George, because I actually have listened to at least two of your podcasts. And uh, one of them was with one of the attorneys that you actually uh, interview. And that was an amazing episode. It really was. It was just full loaded with information. Even things that I was not aware because, well, I didn't study law. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, listen. <laughs> Uh, we can't we can't know it all and uh, we're very blessed in South Florida there's a lot of good professionals who are willing to lend their time to the benefit of the business community but not just South Florida like I had someone speak to SEO marketing from California uh, and so yeah we're trying to expose uh, the business community as much as we can to other experts who will impact their business for good and, and, that's then, excellent. and once again George you know we appreciate your information and now uh, you know willing to give up so much and I always I always say this throughout all my episodes uh, you know your time is very valuable as same as mine but yet we do this really from the bottom of our hearts to share our knowledge and our skills yes. because I believe that knowledge can be a uh, you know it says is knowledge is power well it's really a potential power because it yes. depends how you use that knowledge. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of knowledge, but they never applied that knowledge to into experience, so it was wasted, unfortunately. Um, so we do share this, and we do it with, uh, with good faith, all right? Yes, uh, help that's us. right. And, and that's the way I look at it. And again, everyone who's listening, watching to my channel, you know, George is there, even though he's in Florida, maybe there's something that he can help you if you're in another state. Who knows, maybe you have other connections of other brokers who specialize in commercial leasing, right? And at least you can help them, you know, through the process. Um, because I think it's important, before you sign anything, if you're not familiar with the small print and the legal yes. stuff, by all means, Hire at least, you know, your attorney or someone, a broker who has the expertise of looking at these leads over and over and over and then know what they're looking for. Um, and, and, and it's true, I agree, because a lot of times, maybe we're not ready to sign that lease. I don't care how beautiful, how amazing that space might sound and how much they want to convince you, right, to rent that space might not be the right choice for you. So right. I think it's important that we always realize that when we're making such a big commitment, you know? Well, so we didn't even talk, Liz, about the financial aspects, you know? I mean, we could talk forever about what the Brickell Avenue or Coral Gables or Coconut Creek or Cypress Creek or Boca Raton office markets are, but how, you know, if a tenant is getting an offer from a landlord and they're getting, you know, $1 off the rate, they might think that's a great deal, but it, it takes a commercial real estate, you know, professional who knows and has the data and has been doing deals in that market to say, oh, that's a terrible deal. You know, you, you really could get a lot more or there's a building across the street that we can bring into the picture. We'll help drive the, the deal down. So, you know, there's, there's so much that goes into what we do. Uh, we're not tour guides. Uh, what we talked about today is near and dear to me because I like to teach. I like to get my clients on the same level playing same field as, and, and understand the real estate aspect of it and the lingo. Uh, but there's so many ways it, it makes sense to bring a commercial professional on your side. Um, it's worth it, absolutely. And now, is it possible? I mean, most of most of the lease, I know they try to hook you with the five years, but yes. that's negotiable. I mean, what would you say for like, let's say, for example, someone who's a startup that they still yes. don't have a business? They might have a business plan, but again, they depend on paper. Yeah. So you're not in business for at least you know three years or plus. You really don't have much of a broad idea to what your revenue is going to be and what's going to be ups and your downs like any other business. Yes. Um, can you truly negotiate now in these days? I mean, say, no, I'm not going to do a five year because again, I'm a startup. I'm not, you know, really sure how the company's going to go. Can I do it two, three years? And would that increase the rent if you do it for the last the time? So that's my last question to you. <laughs> that's your last question. Liz. Well, it's, you can answer that in three ways. One, yes, you can. Everything ultimately is negotiable. Some landlords will take a hard and fast no. Five years is when we purchase, especially the institutional owners, their performers, uh, they budgeted five-year lease terms or longer. However, I have found if you can take a space with little improvements or capital expenditure on the landlord's side, 
as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's better perhaps to take a little stained carpet that you could shampoo than, than putting those costs on the landlord. If, you're, if what's valuable to you is a shorter term, mm -hmm. then they're more likely to give it to you if they're not expending build out dollars. There's two other options that you could look at. Okay. Number one, we now live in, a, in, in some respects, it's, it's wonderful on, on one hand, this co-working phenomenon, the WeWork phenomenon, Regis, um, Quest in the local markets, which is a great, I recommend that to anybody to check them out. You can now rent month to month or one year at a time or six months and grow as, as you need to. Now there's a premium. You're going to pay more on a per square foot basis, but again, it's what do you value? It's a shorter term and the flexibility to get in and out of space more important to you than you're willing to pay that versus signing a five-year lease. The other option, which is a great option, which is one? a sublease market, which we talked about earlier. Now, you have a company who signed a five-year lease. They only have two years to go, okay. but they no longer need the space. Sometimes you can get 25, 30% discounts, fully furnished office space, ready to go, cable, everything's included, phone and data, wow. and a shorter term. And so for startup companies, for small businesses, that's another way to get into a key market like Brickle or Coral Gables that perhaps is out of reach because of pricing or term, but you go to the sublease market, now you can get a ready to go suite with only a couple years term. So those are kind of three answers, shorter terms. Uh, yes, if you have less improvements, co-working and, and the sublease. And one other thing that I did want to bring up because that happens to some of my clients already when they lease warehouses or they do, um, you know, uh, office space like yours mm -hmm. or, or both because a lot of here in Florida, we have a lot of warehouse kind of combo with, yes. with an office. Um, be very careful. One of the things, and I, I bring that up because I saw it, um, where a lot of times you're responsible for certain things that are, uh, you know, uh, inside the office uh and it happened to one of my clients where the air conditioning was their responsibility and yeah. when they signed uh, the the lease they were not aware and uh you know come on let's be honest i don't know about you uh, but most of us we don't read every single paragraph that we signed uh, you know yes. um, and it happened to me when something went wrong with the air conditioning it was their responsibility well let me let me add that Number one, I always recommend, Liz, that in most, in every lease, it's always recommended to have an attorney who specializes in contract law and commercial real estate to review it. Okay. Thank you. That you is know, true. Number one. So I'm not an attorney. Been in the business a long time, so we can go through leases and point a lot of this stuff out to tenants, what they need to be aware of. But at the end of the day, uh, they really need to get a good real estate attorney alongside. So absolutely. We see it all the time. We usually come in to the picture after there's a big problem, you know? Uh, and the sooner you have someone working on your side who's defending you, handling your corporate real estate, the better, because you're gonna avoid situations like that. I completely agree. Anyhow, why don't you share that? Because it, I, I yeah. it, it, it happened to one of my clients and he was- All the time. Shocked. He was shocked. He goes, what do you mean? I'm leasing from you. How are you gonna charge me for your AC repair? And, yeah. and ducks and this and maintenance. Yeah, it's, it's on your lease, you sign it. And the, the best time to negotiate the most leverage a tenant will ever have is before he signs the lease. Yes. Once you sign it, you have no leverage. You're done. But that, remember, landlords still, at the end of the day, they want to fill that space. You know, sure. they, either, they, they want to get someone in there paying rent. And so they're more apt to negotiate a good deal for you before. Uh, so you just, that's the time to ask for these things. I say like that before any relationship settles. <laughs> And that happens in general, let's be honest, okay? In business and love life, make sure you have everything up front. That's <laughs> and, and, and hopefully avoid some of the headaches that if it's possible to do so, well, it, it's yeah. worth it. Liz, you're hitting at my heart because that, that's why I launched Blue Box Real Estate. That's why I wrote the book, did the Don't Sign the Lease Project because it's been in my real estate capacity that um, I have seen in the South Florida market so many tenants business owners go about this on their own. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier, we guard our information. The corporate world knows the value of hiring a commercial real estate broker, but the local market's not so much the smaller businesses or the local businesses. And so I wanted to create a firm that as a foundation is about getting this information out to the community through LinkedIn, through, through a book project, through podcasts, however we can, because a, a smarter tenant is going to be a better tenant uh, for all of South Florida. So.
I agree. And, and I think it's not about renting and renting. It's if you can retain a, a client there for a long time, right. I always believe that it takes you better of your property. And that's what it comes down to because, you know what, who cares if you're renting for more money? And, and that's just a personal opinion. But even from, from the business perspective, if every time they move out, you have to spend this much money to right. renovate and, and, and these whole improvements and everything, am I in the better off having the same, you know, uh, the client there. So, uh, George, thank you for your time, for everything you share with us. And please, before I let you go, again, your website, any other information that people can reach out to you? So, yeah, so two, two websites. So Blue Box Real Estate, again, South Florida commercial real estate firm. We're growing. Uh, if anyone owns a property uh, or has an office lease, we'd love to talk to them. But you can reach us at blueboxre.com. So okay. it's blueboxre.com. The fastest way is a little email, info at blueboxre.com. Uh, the Don't Sign the Lease project, as they call we're trying to grow that as more of a brand than just the book project, is don'tsignthelease.com. And, and you can get all kinds of commercial real estate resources. And you have to subscribe because we're always updating. If you get a new podcast comes out, a new blog, new resources, we're looking to do more video series to teach some of the principles of the book in a more palatable way. So whatever we can do, to educate the business community with commercial real estate, we want to do it. So that's that's how you can get a hold of us. Well, thank you once again. And again, to all my dear audience out there, like, share, and comment. If you have any questions for George, like I said, you can directly email him or you can make any comments through YouTube. You know, you do have that comment box below each video. Um, and again, into the next episode, this is Liz Suri, your host of the Tax Advisor Business Success Podcast. And I see you in the next episode. Take care. A lot of success to everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.